Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Cafe Bagheri. I'm so excited. My favorite season of all is finally here, fall. And to celebrate the end of that hot summer we just had, we're going to make a delicious butternut squash and saffron soup together. Let's get started with the star of the show, the butternut squash. An average size butternut squash in the markets I see is about two to three pounds. What I'm going to make today is enough for the two of us here to have for dinner. But the recipe I give you in the comments is for a whole butternut squash, average size. And I want to go for half of it. So I cut this right in the middle. And then what we're going to do is we're going to skin it and cut it into pieces about inch to inch and a half in size, a little cubes, if you will. There you go. So this is a fall vegetable, seasonal, called a butternut squash here in North America and most of English speaking world. So because of its sugar content, this squash in Iran, it's called a kadu, which is a pumpkin. It's called a kadu halvai. Halva, as you know, is a sweet dessert that has sugar in it. So because of the sugar content, they liken it to halva, which is a dessert. So you cut the bottom as well. Now all this can be discarded. So we're going to cut it into slabs. Pumpkin seeds, of course, and squash seeds are tasty if you can wash them and roast them. They make a good snack for your movie time, don't you know? Okay, our squash is peeled and stripped and cleaned. We just kind of cut it into these uh, sticks. And then we're going to cut them across to get our little cubes. As long as these are uniformly sized, so they cook at the same rate, we're good. All right, this is our butternut squash. We are going to apply some vegetable oil so we can roast this squash. Just about two to three tablespoons of vegetable oil. I'm using grapeseed oil. You can use canola oil or even olive oil. Okay, at this point, we have the oil applied. I'll put a couple of teaspoonfuls of salt. You can use black, fresh ground black pepper or white pepper. Folks use white pepper for soups because they don't want the pepper grains to show in the final soup that you serve. I really don't care either way. I don't have any white pepper tonight, so I'm using the black pepper that I have. If you don't want the little specks of black pepper to show in your soup, you can go with white pepper. Next, we're gonna add our onion. I have white onion in this recipe but you can in fact use yellow onion or vidalia if that's what you can find. Cut it in one inch pieces all the way like that. And then add it to my squash, just like that. Just make sure they're broken up. 
like so. So that we can get a good char on all sides. And the last vegetable we're gonna add is one clove of garlic. And this is all gonna get blended. So we just throw it in there. This is the last seasoning we're gonna add to this, which is kind of giving it, along with saffron, its Persian character, it's turmeric, right? We are now ready to lay this down on our cookie sheet. So we got our butternut squash, onion, and garlic. We applied some oil and applied salt, pepper, and turmeric. We'll add some more seasoning in the pot when it's cooking, but now we're gonna roast it to give it some char. I have the oven preheated to 400 degrees on bake. And we're gonna go for about 45 minutes. Once you get some char on the outer edges, your vegetables ready. Halfway through roasting these vegetables, we're gonna just turn them over a little bit. You shake it to make sure they settle back down and let it roast some more. All right, it's been about 45 minutes. And I just observe to see when I get some char around the onions and the squash. And I think I'm there. Watch for that change of color in your oven and maybe somewhere between 30 to 50 minutes. So we're gonna put this right here. We do have our pot waiting to make the soup. Make sure it's centered on the fire. I'm gonna start it on high because the aim is to get to boil, and then we'll drop it to simmer, go about 10, 15 minutes before we uh, blend it and get to our soup, okay? So I'm going to use a spatula to scrape the roasted vegetables and put them into our pot. So, have our fire going. I preheated the chicken broth, three cups of it here, for a few minutes. You don't want to add cold broth here. It kind of sets you back because your vegetables are hot. So you want to have warm broth. This saffron solution, it's explained again in the recipe down below. We'll put about a tablespoon of it. Can I just measure it with my eyes there you go that's about a tablespoon and this is an optional touch this is cayenne pepper you can do aleppo pepper or whatever heat you like we have our saffron and our cayenne in there this is this is it that's all she wrote we'll let this come to a boil and we'll drop it to simmer somewhere between 10 to 15 minutes, then we're gonna blend it, okay? All right, took about six minutes on high to get this to a boil. Now we're gonna bring it down to a simmer and let it go for about 15 minutes. Been 15 minutes, don't do this at home. My hands are asbestos, okay? Look at this. The chunks of squash are like that. That means it's ready. About 15 minutes. And that's exactly how we want this, right? I'm gonna turn off the fire and push this over here to where I have my immersion blender. What you can do is, you can do it with an immersion blender. If you don't have one of these, 
let your vegetable soup get cooler so that you can handle it and pour it into a blender and blend it that way. This is a preferred method because you don't have to wait and you don't have to burn yourself, potentially. Here you go. Very simple. So with the immersion blenders, if you let it touch the bottom of the pot, the stuff can't get into the blade chamber. So make sure there's about an inch of distance between the edge of this thing and the bottom of your pot. Look, just lift it up a little bit, see how the movement gets more pronounced. And a little bit of up and down kind of movement motion like that helps this process. So you have to do this about two to four minutes. Look at this. Um, just to get an idea of where we are. See, there are still chunks, but we're getting there. So you want to go at least two minutes, maybe up to four minutes. All right, let's examine. This is after about a minute and a half, two minutes. It's mostly ground up. There are a few little rough chunks in there. We're gonna go about 30 more seconds and we're done. Okay, so about two and a half minutes of will give us this. To my taste, this is a little too runny. I'm going, so, so there are two possibilities. At this point, after you've done your immersion blending or bl in the blender, it's either too thick or too thin to your taste, right? It's a personal preference. If it's too thick, you will have to add one to three tablespoons of hot chicken broth and just, kind of stir it to get the right consistency. Or if it's too runny, you just push it back over the eye and do like low and just kind of simmer it for another three to eight minutes to get it thickened up, to reduce it, if you will. So I'm gonna do that for a couple of minutes and we'll come back and serve it. The smell is unbelievable. So a couple of minutes of reduction has got this to exactly where we want this. One final step is to do a test. I have two spoons because you don't want to use every spoon more than once for tasting here. I'm going to test it for salt and spices. I have asbestos mouth according to my wife i don't recommend you doing that right off the bat it's a little hot but not for me you know what it needs a little bit of salt based on my taste and i'm going to just do a little stirring with this clean spoon and this is pretty much ready to go there you go Look at this. Just a little more. There are a few options for the garnish based on your taste. What I would recommend is either creme fraiche. You can just get store-bought sour cream and thin it out with some milk or cream and I would just go like that and then just use your spoon or fork to kind of swirl it like that get some pistachio nuts crushed up and sprinkle it on top another good option would be some 
some pumpkin seeds to put on there. Here's your butternut squash, saffron soup. It's wonderful. This is one of my favorites in this time of year. I know you will enjoy it. It will become one of your regular fall staples. If you like what you saw tonight, please hit the like below this video. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button right here so we can keep in touch. And I hope to see you right here again at Cafe Begay very soon. The cold season is coming and we're going to do some very cool recipes together. Okay. I can't wait to try this. Where's my spoon? I can't find my spoon. Where is it?